Hello friends, welcome to this new video. As I have told you earlier that we will be starting from methods of producing plane polarized light or plane polarized wave. So what are the methods? Number one, the polarization, polarization by reflection. This is the first method polarization by reflection in which we will be studying Brewster's law number two is polarization by refraction this is the second one in which we will be studying law of malice and number three is the polarization by double refraction in which we will be studying ordinary and extraordinary rays so these are the three basic methods for producing plane polarized light that is in our syllabus so let us begin by polarization by refraction cut <clears throat> so let us begin by polarization by reflection so let's begin with the polarization by reflection. To understand this process, we'll be needing a schematic diagram. So let me draw the diagram for you all. Let this be a partially reflecting surface. Let this be the normal to that surface. And this is the incident ray this one is the reflected ray and this one is the refracted ray remember since this surface is a partially reflecting surface it does not fully reflect or it does not fully refract it partially does both of them so this observation was made by sir e l malas a french scientist he noticed that if a beam of ordinary light particles is incident on partially reflecting transparent medium such as glass so we are taking the example of glass here the reflected beam that is this one the reflected beam is partially plane polarized so let this be the source and this beam the incident beam be not reflected that is let this be unpolarized ray let this angle be i p incident ray since the arrow is this way the this arrow will be this way and this will be this way so this is the incident angle this one is the incident ray this is the reflected ray this is the normal and this one is the refracted ray let this be in dash and this one be the refracted ray that is it is also unpolarized in this direction let name as s c and b so he observed that this reflected ray will be partially plane polarized that is vibrates in one direction i have previously told you how we represent unpolarized and plane polarized light so this was the observation by el malas again in 1811 sir brewster performed a number of experiments to study the polarization of light by reflection especially so from that he found that the reflected and the refracted rays are perpendicular to each other in this case in this situation the refracted and the reflected ray are perpendicular to each other that is this is 90 degree if we need to have reflection polarization or polarization by reflection so the reflected and the refracted ray must be perpendicular to each other and this one will be equal as you all know by the laws of reflection and you also observe that for a particular angle of incidence 
the reflected ray is not only partially polarized but it is fully polarized that one gives the definition for brewster's law so let us see what is brewster's law brewster's law this is an important question from examination point of view so what brewster's law define it defines that the angle of incidence the angle of incidence of reflecting surface that is this one we have considered a glass at which the reflected and refracted rays become mutually perpendicular at which the reflected ray and refracted ray always remember this one is the reflected ray and this one is the refracted ray becomes mutually perpendicular to each other and the reflected ray is completely polarized and the reflected ray is completely remember not partially it is completely polarized is known as the angle of polarization or Brewster's angle is known as the angle of polarization or Brewster's angle so you can see if it is the Brewster's angle this one is the Brewster's angle so what are the consider considerations that the reflected and the refracted ray will be per mutually perpendicular that is uh, will be 90 degree in between them and the reflected ray will be fully polarized not partially polarized then this incident angle we have determined or we have denoted as IP is known as Brewster's angle so this is Brewster's law of polarization so this one was the prequel to Brewster's law this is the consideration we have to uh, do before uh, defining Brewster's law so according to Snell's law we know that refractive index that is mu is equal to sine of i by sine of r we already know that according to Snell's law so when i equal to ip that is this angle then we can see that r equal to 90 degree minus ip that is this angle if we denote as r it will be 90 degree minus ip at i equal to ip r equal to we can say 180 degree minus of 90 degree minus ip we can say from mathematics so mu can be defined as mu equal to sine of ip by sine of 90 degree minus ip therefore mu will be equal to tan of ip so this is actually the brewster's law this one is a prequel and this is the brewster's law so if we define brewster's law what we can say that brewster's law state that the tangent of polarization angle that is the tangent of polarization angle is equal to the refractive index of the medium that here we have taken glass so that is equal to the refractive index of the medium from the surface at which refraction of unpolarized light takes place so this is the final definition of Brewster's law and is very important from examination point of view now we'll move on to polarization by refraction another important topic 
so how we obtain polarization by refraction we have already studied previously that if this angle is the polarization angle that is ip then this will be a completely polarized light the reflected ray but the refracted ray on the other hand will be partially polarized that you can see so if we again and again do the refraction of this partially polarized ray it will get completely refracted so we can say this one or this ray is partially polarized but this one is completely polarized by increasing the number of plates uh, of refraction we can see that the amount of polarization increases and finally we will obtain a completely polarized light here we will be defining after defining this process of polarization by refraction we will be defining law of malus so let us first define law of malus what it states that intensity of plane polarized light transmitted through an analyzer is proportional to the square of cosine of the angle between the plane of transmission of the analyzer and the plane of polarizer so what does this means if this is polarizer and this is the optic axis of it and let this be a analyzer and let this be the optical axis if we rotate it by some amount so if the angle between the optical axis of polarizer and the angle between the optical axis of analyzer so let this be p1 and p2 as before let this be theta so if this emergent ray is i naught and this emergent ray is i so if we have to calculate i then i must be equal to i naught into cos square theta so this one defines the law of malus so the intensity of polarized light coming out from the analyzer can be defined or can be calculated or can be found which is equal to the multiplication of intensity of amount of polarized light coming out from polarizer multiplied by the square of cos of the angle between the optical axis of the polarizer and an analyzer hence we can say when theta will be equal to 90 degree that means the axis are in 90 degree then i will be equal to 0 in the first video i have already told this in the experiment or the conclusion for polarization now let us move to the third part that is polarization by double refraction there we will we'll have some more definitions so what is polarization by double refraction when an unpolarized light that is considered this one to be an unpolarized light this is the source so when an unpolarized light is incident on a an isotropic crystals an isotropic crystals i will be defining this later on so an, an, an isotropic crystals which an example as calcite crystal the incident light is splitted into two refracted plane polarized rays you can see here i have defined two refracted plane polarized rays that is e ray and o ray this is the extraordinary ray or e ray or this is the ordinary ray or o ray so this phenomenon is known as the double refraction phenomenon or polarization so what are e ray and o ray when an unpolarized light is incident on an anisotropic crystals for example a calcite crystal it produces two refracted rays by double refraction process one of these two refracted rays obeys the ordinary snell's law of refraction and having vibrations perpendicular to the principal section of the crystal so this ray will be known as ordinary ray or o ray so ordinary ray or o ray obeys 
ordinary law of Snell's law Snell's law of refraction and they have vibrations vibrations that is perpendicular to the principal section to the principal section so what are extraordinary rays so it is the other refracted ray that is formed due to double refraction that does not obey the ordinary Snell's law so it does not obey the ordinary Snell's law of refraction and they also have vibrations along the principal section of the crystals so it is perpendicular to the principal sections of the crystal and it is vibrations along the principal section of the crystals so this is the definition of e ray and o ray so i have already told you about anisotropic crystals what are anisotropic crystals an anisotropic crystal can be defined as a crystal inside whom after diffraction the velocity of light in different directions are different due to their difference in optical properties so these are anisotropic crystals whereas the isotropic crystals have similar optical properties in different directions and hence after refraction the velocities of different light rays will remain the same so this is all about double refraction process now inside the crystal if we have the velocity of o ray greater than e ray that is the velocity of o ray greater than e ray then this type of crystal is known as positive crystals similarly if velocity of e ray is greater than o ray then this type of crystals are known as negative crystals remember this comes in especially the mcq part of the examination Now let me define the last but very important topic that is Nicole prism. Nicole prism is an important instrument. So what is Nicole prism? It is an optical device that can produce plain polarized E ray from unpolarized light and also has an ability to analyze the plain polarized light in the experiment of polarization. So how does it looks it looks like this it is a plane crystal with different angles the speciality is in the middle cross section we have a layer of substance that is known as the canada balsam layer here the extraordinary rays can be refracted or can get passed through that is it looks like this schematically but the ordinary rays get reflected out this is the o ray and these are the e rays so we get as a result the E rays, whereas this is the unpolarized light. This is the small schematic diagram for Nikol prism. How Nikol prism act as a polarizer? If an optical device can restrict the vibration of any unpolarized light in a single direction, then it is called polarizer. So if Nikol prism does that, it acts as a polarizer. And when an optical device can indicate whether the light is polarized or unpolarized, then it is called an analyzer. So Nikol prism can act as both a polarizer and as an analyzer. This is an important device. So what is the principle behind it? The activity of Nikol prism is based on the principle of double refraction in a uniaxial crystal. So when the unpolarized light is incident 
on the uniaxial crystal it splits up into polarized rays that is e rays and o rays by the process of total internal reflection using a canada balsam layer that i have shown here we by the process of total internal reflection the o ray is somehow eliminated and the e ray is transmitted through this crystal as a plain polarized light this is the principle behind the working of a nipple prism so friends now let us move on to the last topic that is the topic for retardation plates so we know that there are two kinds of retardation plates that we are using that is one is quarter wave plate and another is half wave plate quarter wave plate and half wave plate so what are retardation plate the optical device which makes a finite path between o ray and e ray by retarding the motion of one of these rays is known as retardation plate so let me write the definition for you so this is the basic definition optical device which makes a finite path difference between o and e ray by retarding the motion of one of these rays are known as retardation plates so first we will look over quarter wave plate if the thickness of the doubly refracting crystal is so adjusted that it produces a path difference of lambda by 4 or phase difference of pi by 2 between the o ray and e ray then the plate is called quarter wave plate so for quarter wave plate we will be having path difference of lambda by 4 and phase difference of pi by 2 then it will be a quarter wave plate and for half wave plate will be having a path difference of lambda by 2 since it is half and a phase difference of pi then it will be a half wave plate remember these two conditions for quarter wave plate and half wave plate now let us remember the formula for thickness of the plates for negative crystals for negative crystals of quarter wave plate t must be equal to lambda by 4 into mu o minus mu e and for positive crystals t must be equal to lambda by 4 into mu e minus mu o since for positive crystals this one is greater so this is the formula for quarter wave plate similarly for half wave plate for negative crystals t must be equal to lambda by 2 into mu o minus mu e and for positive crystals it will be t must be equal to lambda by 2 into mu o minus mu o sorry it will be mu e minus mu o since mu e is greater so remember these four formulas for thickness of plate also an important use of quarter wave plate is that it is used to produce circularly or elliptically polarized light by placing them in the path of a plain polarized light this is the use of quarter wave plate with this we have come to the end of the polarization topic of module 3 now in the next videos we'll be continuing with laser and holography thank you